All right, for video number four, I want to kind of go into, uh, start going into creating actual usable animations rather than just talking about a little bit of theory or showing you what not to do. So the best way for you to get started with an animation is with one of the really, really simple ways to get there, which is either with an explode view or with a make controller animation. Let's start with the explode view. So to create an explode view, well, you can just come into the configurations tab and say new exploded view. And basically what I'm going to do is just grab some of these subassemblies or some of these components and kind of start pulling them out and taking a look at how this would maybe go back together. So I'll start by maybe pulling this uh, base plate off, this base support, and we'll pull it down. And then I'll right click to lock in that step and then we'll come over here and we'll grab this foot we'll pull it down a little bit lock that one in and then let's start maybe on the other end let's grab not that one I want to grab the entire gripper assembly we'll pull it down and then we'll grab this arm as well as this piece this piece, this one, this one. Start with those and just kind of pull those up. And this is just a really simple example. Oops. So there's a really simple animation. And what I can do in order to create an animation out of this. I mean, you could just automatically animate it right here, but that wouldn't allow you to create kind of an animation or a video out of that. That's just kind of impromptu as needed. So instead, what you would do is go into your motion study, and we're going to use a motion assembly animation wizard. So the animation wizard allows us to pull in either uh, explode or a collapse or a make controller those are the main ones we're going to do or just automatically causes a nice little rotate camera view uh, appearance I'm going to do an explode view and I want it to explode for four seconds actually let's do five seconds starting at time zero we'll click finish and now even though you may not really be comfortable in your timeline you have a whole bunch of keys down here and when you hit calculate you'll see that it mimics the movement caused by that motion study. Now, these are not set in stone. You don't have to have them in the same order. You could extend this guy out and extend this guy out, and now both the support and the foot are going to kind of explode at the same time uh, simultaneously. So now let's recalculate that, and you can see it's a very different effect from what it was originally. I can come in here and, and say I want this one, actually let's do, I want it to go much faster and then there to be a pause right here. So there's no change right there. And so all you got to do is just choose the start and end points, move those around, and you can kind of affect uh, how this thing moves. Now you're not going to get complex kinematic motion out of this. It's just a really quick way to show that if you want to do it again, you could say I want to collapse it now starting at five seconds and we'll do it for another five seconds hit finish and now for the rest of the animation it's gonna go put it back together we'll do it one more quick time just for fun and we'll do a, a rotate the model around the y-axis we'll do it one time clockwise uh, starting at zero seconds going for a full ten seconds and so now we animate it and our camera is going to be rotating around the y-axis. So some kind of cool, really, really simple way to make a really basic sort of open something up and look at it animation. And in the middle of this, if you want to, you do have the ability to kind of add additional keys uh, if you need to. Now the other way that you can do this, let's just create a new motion study. The other way you can do this is using what's called a mate controller. And a mate controller is something that was added a few years ago. Um, 
SolidWorks, I don't know, 2018 maybe? <laughs> I have to go back and look. Uh, but basically what you can do is create locations for various different components. And in this case, what it's doing is it's collecting distance or angle mates and then creating kind of a dialogue where you can tweak and move those. So what you do is you say, I want you know the home position, and you come over and you move around until you say, well, this right here, this is the home position, right? And then you say, and this is position three. We want to rotate this like this. And basically, you just kind of go around and pick and set up and, and designate each of the different positions. And you can uh, add new positions. You can update the position if something needs to change, like this one here I didn't actually lock that in, we'll just execute that change, and now home is this location. Which is great if, you know, this thing needs to go through various progressions to pick something up, go home, drop something off, go home, uh, and you want to show that, that progression from point A to B to C to B to D to A to E, right? So I'll go ahead and click OK on this, make controller feature now exists in here and if I go into my animation I can now import that make controller now there's a couple ways you can do this and this is kinda interesting we're gonna do it as an animation where it's gonna create key points but if you want you can do it with motors instead Now, if you recall motors don't work in animation key points don't work in basic motion or motion analysis so kind of pay attention to what you're trying to do. We're trying to be as stupid simple as we can be right now. So we're going to do key points and animation. Click finish. And then all the mates are automatically set for us. So if from one point to the next point to the next point, if those all change, it'll automatically go through. And what it's doing is basically uh, going through uh, each location one after another in sequential order. So if you see, here's all the different positions. Uh, it's just going through them in sequential order. Now if you want to change things up, let's say you want to, if this was wait, one second, this was the probably the uh, position two location. You can come in here and actually just copy this and come over here to this point and paste it. And what you've done is you've added a position two out here. And then maybe paste it here, and you can dwell at position two. Then you can grab these guys and do position four or three. Kind of get the point, hopefully, and, and you can kind of uh, uh, create a customized animation based on all these various keyframes. Now, in both of those scenarios, you have almost no actual motion timeline interaction. All the motion creation, all the keyframe creation, is done by that animation wizard so that you don't have to mess with it. Because this is something that really has a lot of people tripped up because they'll come in here and they'll forget where they're at and they'll try to uh, move a component thinking that they're just kind of messing around in the model tab and it starts creating these keys. And if you are using these wizards and you start seeing green bars show up, that means that you're starting to really create some conflicts in here. So pay real close attention, and as long as you use those wizards, you should be able to get the simplest possible animations you can. In the next video, we'll take a look at creating the keys themselves in animation.